not let anyone see you. Following the special editions of Fable and Devil May Cry, the third installment of the best-selling Metal Gear series solidifies its position at the top of the genre it helped create. The latest four-disc director's cut, Subsistence, is a significant step up from its predecessor. But like other upgrades, it's only recommended for people who missed the original or hardcore fans of the franchise. Huh? I'm in command here. Snake Eater, released in 2004, was a triumph for Konami and Hideo Kojima, and it introduced lots of revolutionary new elements to the control and combat. But the camera's perspective aside from the ability to switch to first person, stayed the same way it had been since the 8-bit NES. This made the game more frustrating than it needed to be, and contrasted the otherwise breathtakingly fluid presentation. So the biggest change to the gameplay, and the best example of the developers taking advice from their fans, is the addition of a third person perspective that you default to from the beginning. You can switch back to the old view, but the new one gives you a much more efficient view of your surroundings and more opportunities to appreciate the superb visuals. But the main reason why those that beat MGS3 will want to try subsistence is the online multiplayer between up to eight terrorists or secret agents. It includes rescue, sneaking, and capture missions, and an extremely turbulent deathmatch mode. In multiplayer, you control your character in the third person, but you can switch to first person for more accurate shooting. The trouble is, you can't move in first person, which veterans of MGS3 will understand and enjoy implementing online. But those used to other PS2 action shooters, like SOCOM, might need a while to adjust. While online is a first for the series, and it offers a multiplayer experience that's definitely unique, those that get frustrated with Metal Gear's signature control will find playing it competitively, especially against those that excel at it, a hassle to deal with. Subsistence is exclusive to the PS2, the same system that Snake Eater premiered on. So there isn't a huge leap in the new version's graphics, but it's still one of the best looking games on Sony's current gen console. And the environments hold up despite being given the ability to move the camera anywhere you want and judge the textures up close. He's good. And for those who want to get a quick taste of the 15 plus hours of gameplay the single player provides, you can access all of the cinemas and boss battles at the game start through a list of additional extras. While most of this will not be new to those who beat Snake Eater, and those who didn't won't want to spoil the experience for themselves before they start playing, MGS veterans will most likely view subsistence as a necessary collector's item, because it ties the story together, half of me belongs to the boss, and delivers the most complete package of any MGS release to date. By directly addressing issues that fans have been complaining about for a long time, and cramming as many extra features as possible, Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence delivers more than enough reasons for fans of the franchise to stand up and cheer. But anyone that isn't crazy about Metal Gear, especially those that have already played Snake Eater, might want to hold out until Guns of the Patriots.